Hi friends, it's Russ here again and we're having more Daisy Lever gun fun. What I'm going to talk about today is the front sight band on some of our favorite Daisy Lever guns. Now the last video we did had to do with a model 111 number 40 that um, I decided to do a little doctoring on and I called it Grandpap's Rifle. After posting this uh, up on videos for all of you to see, one of the subscribers asked me how I made the front band for this. Actually, I did not make it. This is the original band on Grandpap's rifle. This is the one that came with the gun. I simply colored it in a little with uh, a little gold testers model paint. And if you look real closely, you can still see the dimple here and the dimple on the other side where it's spot welded onto the front of the gun. See that? Okay. So this is an original sight. That's not to say that I've never been prone to making sights because I have. In fact, I have a gun back here that I wanted to own a modern style Red Rider that looked like the golden, band, golden banded guns that were advertised back in the day. So I took the regular forearm band, colored that, and this, if you can notice, the original sight was further to the front. This sight is one that I've constructed and it is back further, almost to the loading port. And it does fit right on the front here. Now, how do you make one of these? If you're really interested, let me show you a couple things you can do. First, you're going to need to find out exactly what shape that has to be in. It just so happens, this is an old original band from one of the guns from back in the day. And if you can see, I drilled out the weld spots on this and removed it from the gun. I used it, uh, I used the gun for a parts gun that I had uh, I had salvaged some things from, and I thought that may come in handy sometime. But I wanted to be able to reproduce one of these. Now, this is made out of a fairly stiff piece of steel, and I wanted to be able to work the steel a little bit easier to be able to put it onto <clears throat> practically any, any gun that I wanted it to fit. So I used 26-gauge sheet steel, happened to be galvanized, and I made a forearm band jig like this out of parts from other guns. This is the fake shot tube. This is part of a front barrel shield. This happens to be, let me get that off of here so I can show you. This happens to be one item I used to make the mold with. So this is a finished product, and I'm going to show you exactly how I got to this point. I took a piece of um, sheet steel, 26 gauge, it's galvanized, and I had it sheared down to three quarters of an inch at several of these pieces. This is good because you can cut it off to whatever length you need to create the band. Once I had a piece cut off, I took, I took the piece of steel, laid it on the front of this jig, hammered the form over top of it, so you can see there's a little bit of space there for it to fit in, and what I ended up with was a piece of steel that would fit over top of the form. I took the rest of it, pinched it, brought it around to the top, and let it be bigger than I needed so that I could work with it. This gave us the basic form. Once I had that in there, I was able to keep the size properly. And this form acts as a good replica for the gun itself. You don't, If you have one of these, 
you don't need to actually use the gun as the form and perhaps da perhaps damage the front of the rifle. You don't want that to happen. Now, in lieu of hammering on this form up here, I just took a little piece of that tubing that was the fake magazine tube. And whenever I cause this to go around, I hammer this down over top like that. And I start from that point and make my form. Once you have this in place, it's now wondering how you're going to keep this together. Now, I've done it a s several different ways. I kind of like this way because it's more solid, but you can use silver solder. You can grind out to bare steel the inside edges of this. You can solder it down or you can tack weld it if you have a tack welder. Or what I do, and it's easy to see on here because I haven't painted this one, I take a thin piece of the same steel that I'm using, and even though this one isn't quite as tight on the ends, it's a good example here I can show you. I crimp it around the two pieces of band, and that does hold it tightly in place. And I crimp it using my vise. I have a bench vise that has good star jaws on it that crimp these things in tightly. So what I end up with is, this is one that's been silver soldered together. You can cut the height down to whatever you need. This is one that I finished. I used, actually, I did double duty on this. I silver soldered it, plus I put a crimp band on it. And then I was able to cut it down and grind it and file it and make it in the shape of a front ramp site. The reason there are two holes here is because I did have this applied to a gun and wanting to keep in a space I used two tiny screws to hold the sides in. You can use adhesives or you can spot weld or you can do whatever you want to hold it on the front of the gun. So this is a site that could be used and it does, if you see, this representation of what the front of the gun looks like it fits down in here if I can get that on I did pinch that a little bit so get that down on there and if you can see down inside of here where it's going to fit over top the fact that I'm using a thin piece of steel gives me the opportunity to form it to whichever gun I have if there's a little bit of deflection in there this will work just fine I can make it fit on any one so that's my um, solution for not having an original sight. What I did with this gun was push it all the way back as far as I wanted it. I secured it in that particular spot without using the screws. I cut it back for a little bit of a taper on the ramp. I don't know if you can see that up here. And now this is my version of a new Red Rider with the golden band appearance and because I didn't like the fact that the Red Rider logo was on the right side of the stock I sanded that out and I created a Red Rider logo on this side you can tell that's not factory but hey eh, it's pretty good I use carbon paper and a little rubbing and sharpie looks pretty good Restained the furniture on it, and now I have a combination of a new Red Rider with all of its safety features and the appearance of what the gold banded Red Riders would have looked like if Daisy were producing it today. Hey, since Daisy's not producing it, I figure I may as well make my own. That's it for today, folks. If you uh, have any questions or comments about this, don't forget, subscribe, and let's get this together. We like to hear from you, and I do answer whenever I see comments made. There it is, folks. Take it easy. Have a great day.